not science. It's effing science. This is effing artillery, the part of the show that we like to dedicate to blowing things up. But today, we're gonna do things a little differently. Rather than exalt in an orgy of wanton destruction, we're going to add a little finesse and create some artful displays of firepower. Basically, we're gonna create our own homemade fireworks. But these are not the kind of fireworks you can buy at a roadside stand. Yes! Ours are effing awesome! That was incredible, dude. That was awesome. Fireworks aren't just loud bangs and colorful flashes that brighten up a summer night. They're actually complicated chemical reactions that produce light and sound. We're gonna hack the cake our own flashes and bangs in a fireworks show of effing proportions. Starting with some liquid firecrackers. For our liquid firecrackers, I put sodium chloride in each of these four jars. Now, when I add formaldehyde, it'll react and form chlorine dioxide, a chemical compound so unstable that when it reacts with air, it'll detonate. Wait, wait, you said chemical so unstable detonate, right? Yeah. And it's this one? Yeah. Perfect, dude. Oh, man. Wait, wait, wait. So it's like a glug, oh, glug, glug, and a glug, glug, and a glug, glug, and a glug, glug. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's going to be big. <laughs> yeah, you will see. I'm going to hold my ears. That is cool. When sodium chloride reacts with formaldehyde, you get chlorine dioxide, a chemical so un it goes ballistic when mixed with air, in what scientists call an exothermic reaction, a chemical reaction that produces heat. In this case, the heat comes from the chlorine dioxide breaking down into the chlorine and oxygen gas. When chemical bonds are created, energy is released, and sometimes that energy looks and sounds like firecrackers. When you get down to it, all fireworks are just bright flashes against the night sky. And ours are no different, except that they happen to flash brighter than the sun. <laughs> Safety goggles required. This is 100 pounds of magnesium. It's a highly reactive metal that burns at over 3,000 degrees. When I ignite it with these road flares, we should get quite a light show. Most fires go out when you hit them with water. But magnesium just gets pissed off. Magnesium burns so bright, burns so hot. Hot enough to melt steel. Wow. The light from burning objects is called thermal radiation. Physicist Max Planck discovered that the hotter something burns, the higher the frequency of the light it emits. That light ranges from the faint red glow of a dying ember to the blinding white hot luminescence of magnesium. Don't try using water to put out your magnesium fire. Water only feeds the flames. Burning magnesium attracts oxygen so strongly that it will literally tear the oxygen out of the water molecules. This turns the water into hydrogen gas, commonly used as rocket fuel. And it also makes one hell of a sparkler. And now, for the grand finale to our chemical fireworks show, we're going to create a rainbow wall of fire using some basic chemical compounds and a little bit of alcohol. Actually, Angie, it's a lot of alcohol. OK, a lot. Exactly. Usually when you see fireballs in the movies, it's made with gasoline, which gives a red, smoky color. For our fireballs, we're going to use alcohol, which burns clear, clean blue. Now, if we add certain chemicals to it, it'll create different colors, like sodium, which gives us a nice yellow color. And lithium will give us a bright red color. And potassium will give us purple. All right, now that we've got our colors flaming, it's time to get them flying. Go! Those are gorgeous. To create our fireballs, we loaded each of these mortars with methyl alcohol, one of our chemical color additives, and a small explosive charge. The explosive will simultaneously launch the alcohol upwards and ignite it, creating a fireworks show that's effing amazing. Oh. 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 That was 
so hot. When an atom is heated, its electrons get excited and jump up to the next electron shell, or energy level. When they calm down, they go back to their ground state, and the leftover energy is emitted as a photon, a particle of light. Since different atoms have different numbers of electrons, they emit different light at different energies or wavelengths. Lithium emits red light, the longest wavelength in our visual spectrum. Potassium emits violet light with the shortest wavelength. Check out potassium with a wavelength of 400 nanometers. That's 400 billionths of a meter. Copper, 475 nanometers. Barium, sodium, and with the longest wavelength, lithium. Now you know the secret to lighting up a summer night. All it takes is a little effing science.